Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We have a very requested video today. The FabFitFun spoiler research video where I go in depth in all of the things I found. So this is going to be category one. There are six categories and I believe you can get six to eight items. I'm not sure, I haven't looked at category six if I'm being completely honest, so I'm not sure if you can still get eight items, but that's how it used to be. You could get up to six to eight items, because in some categories, usually category six, you could get multiple smaller items or one large item, which would make your box six items. I really have no idea if they're still doing that. We actually receive them in backwards order. I always do them in order, because I think that's smarter, and usually category one has the best items. You let me know what you think about this category when we're done. Without any more chit chat, I've already spent three minutes, we'll probably edit it, but it's up to three minutes right now of chit chat. Let's get started with category one. So the first one is from Elemis. Elemis is no longer a cruelty-free brand because they sell in mainland China. Their parent company is also not cruelty-free, although it doesn't matter because they're no longer cruelty-free as well. This is their Superfood AHA Pumpkin Glow Cleansing Balm. The retail value for this is a $45 retail value. Before I get into all the products, I know I already started, but before I get into all the products, nothing has any restrictions. So if you were in the US, UK, or Canada, you can pick from any of category one items. So I'm just saying that now so I don't have to say it after each item because there's a lot of items in this category. This is a three ounce container for this cleansing balm. It can be used daily, the frequency can be used daily. It's mainly for double cleansing. So if you've ever done double cleansing before, you cleanse with a balm or an oil first and that gently removes your makeup and then you cleanse with a cleanser after that, which also removes the balm, but there's some moisturization that happens in that first cleansing and it breaks down the makeup slowly instead of harshly. The soap or cleanser would break down that makeup a little bit more harshly, so it's not as good for your skin. That's kind of the point of double cleansing. When I looked up reviews for this product, it had 4.5 stars with 1,009 reviewers. This is specific to their pumpkin cleansing balm because you're gonna see there's actually another cleansing balm in the same category with like 24,000 or 27,000, I don't know, I'll have to look it up, but a crazy amount of reviews that is a little bit different. So this is their specific one that's pumpkin enzyme, which is gonna do some of that exfoliation and it's AHAs. And this had a 4.5 star rating. There were common trends in that. Obviously 4.5 is a little bit on the higher end, but I consider anything over four kind of normal, like normal good. So it's not spectacular or anything, but with a thousand reviews, 4.5, it's pretty good. And it was a lot of skin softening. People, some people really liked the scent. It does have, according to this, a pumpkin scent or a light pumpkin scent. They also really liked that it was removing their makeup, so it did a really good job at removing makeup. They also said it did a really good job of removing impurities. That oil can sometimes also pull those impurities out of your pores. Those were all the positives. Negatives were about it being priced too high. Luckily, we're getting it in a box, so we don't care if it's priced too high because we're not paying full price. That some people didn't like the texture, so it's a really like greasy kind of texture and it also goes from balm to oil like you can feel it as you're removing that makeup nice and slowly and I think that just if you're not a balm person that's an uncomfortable feeling or the first time you do it it's also an uncomfortable feeling and then the last thing was skin sensitivity or mild irritation so it might not be sensitive skin friendly at least this particular one it might not be sensitive skin friendly it does have AHAs those usually aren't sensitive skin friendly. It does also have pumpkin enzymes. Also maybe a little bit harsh, might be a little bit harsh depending on your skin type. So it makes sense why you would see that in the negative comments. So I'm gonna talk about key ingredients first, but then I'm gonna go through the entire ingredients list because I wrote down everything in this ingredients list. So the key ingredients are those pumpkin enzymes, which are doing mild exfoliation. Then acerola cherry, it's just a high form of vitamin C, a natural form of vitamin C, really not as harsh, but just like a really natural form of vitamin C for your skin, really good at brightening. Then the next key ingredient is mango butter, really moisturizing, that one's gonna do a lot of hydration of that skin and really give you that super soft skin, which you did see in the positives. And then fermented rice water, again, that's also a soothing, hydrating ingredient. So I have the rest of ingredients here. I'm gonna read through the ingredients list because I haven't looked up all of these, but in general, I kind of know what 
most ingredients do now. I've been doing this on my channel long enough that I have most of them memorized, and if there's one that I didn't have memorized, I did look it up. First one is caprylic capper triglyceride. That is if coconut oil and glycerin make a little baby, so super moisturizing there. Glycerin's next. Again, it's a humectant, so moisturizing as well. Then you have water. Then you have some emulsifiers. You also have ceteral olivate and sorbitan olivate, which is one of my favorite moisturizers of all time, and I've talked about it on this channel. You have to find them together in order for them to be this like super moisturizer. And it's nicknamed Olivum 1000 when you see both of those on the ingredients list. This is like a really extreme, I have very dry skin type moisturization because this is a bomb. Even if you had like oily skin, it's not gonna over moisturize your face cause you're removing it. But I love seeing those two ingredients together, especially for like smoothing out and hydrating your skin. After that, that's a preservative. That's when you see the mango seed butter, which is one of those key ingredients, like I said. The cherry ferment, pumpkin fer fruit fermate filtrate, that's exfoliating your skin. And rice, that's the fermented rice water, the next one. What else do we have here? Camilla sinensis seed oil, that's like a tea oil, really rich in antioxidants. We also have glucose on here, which is gonna soften your skin as well. It's like sugar, glucose is really sugar. Sodium hydroxide, that's pH. Sunflower seed oil, another moisturizer. Beta carotene, that's gonna be really full of antioxidants as well. And another antioxidant, capsorubin. Butylene glycol, that's another humectant, so it's gonna, again, moisturize your skin. A lot of moisturizing ingredients, like, as you go through this. Tocopherols, vitamin E, really full of antioxidants, protects and moisturizes your skin. Then you have radish root filtrate. That's probably maybe preservative. Um, olive fruit oil is gonna moisturize and nourish your skin. Olive oil, basically. Um, anything else I see? You do have two forms of vitamin C here. Ascorbyl palmitate, which is a stable form of vitamin C. And then you have ascorbic acid, which is a really more intense form of vitamin C, but way less stable. Kind of the pros and cons, it's really nice that this has both. Basically, the ascorbyl palmitate is fat soluble, which means it can actually penetrate in your skin and do what it needs to do a little bit better, a little bit deeper. And then ascorbic acid is gonna just sit on top of your skin. And one is way more stable than the other. Like I said, the first one's a little bit more stable. Ascorbic acid is not, but ascorbic acid is a little more potent because that instability also allows you to like full force vitamin C. The other one, your skin actually has to turn back into ascorbic acid. So it's a derivative and then when it penetrates your skin, your body turns it actually into the vitamin C that feeds your skin, if that makes sense. But it can go in the lipid layer because it's fat soluble. So you see there's pros and cons to both of these. Um, the ascorbic acid oxidizes kind of quickly so that when you might not see the benefits of that one, the longer you have the product. And especially, I think this was a screw top lid so all that oxygen helps that lose its potency over time a little bit more quickly the next one also elemis also not cruelty free is called their pro collagen melting or naked makeup melting cleansing balm for 69 dollars retail value this one is fragrance free so like i said before the other one had a scent it didn't have necessarily the ingredients fragrance but it did have in some of the reviews, positive and negative, a strong scent, which they described as pumpkin. Not necessarily a strong one, actually. A lot of the positive said light pumpkin. This one is going to be fragrance-free, also mineral oil-free, and this you get 3.5 ounces, which is just a little bit more than the other one. And on this one, like I said, way more reviews, 24,677 reviews, but a much higher rating at 4.8 stars, which 4.8 stars with 24,000 reviews is a really high rating. Unfortunately for me, I don't put anything that isn't cruelty-free in my box because cruelty-free is very important to me. But when I see something with that high of a rating, it's usually like piques my interest. Like why, why do they love it this much? The positive said it was really effective at removing makeup, also softening, hydrating. It said sensitive skin friendly, whereas the other one said it wasn't sensitive skin friendly. Uh, people really liked that it was fragrance free as well. So I think they maybe like messed up with the pumpkin one by adding the scent and making it a little bit more harsh because I think that's how this one gets the 4.8 and that one only gets 4.5. 
The negatives were that it leaves a residue or they didn't like the feel again. Um, it also said requires double cleansing to get that residue off. Like multiple people said that, but that is kind of the purpose of a balm. You don't usually just do the balm and like leave it. It does require the second cleansing step. So some people felt like, oh, I'm adding an extra step to my routine. If you're really into double cleansing and if you really know the benefits, you might be okay with adding that extra step. Um, a, lot of, a lot of this was also the price is kind of high. This is $69, price is kind of high. And then some had issues with the packaging, like the lid wasn't closing properly or they said some of their product was missing when they received it. And then if they had acne or oily skin, some people mentioned that this particular product caused breakouts. So that was in the negatives. I haven't used it before. Like I said, it's not a cruelty-free item, so I've never purchased this before. Um, but I do have typically oily skin, sometimes acne prone skin, depending on, you know, the, the season of my life. But I do steer clear from things with reviews that say that, even if it's just some people, because I don't want acne skin. So it's a big deal to me. Might not be as big of a deal to you. In the key ingredients for this, it is elderberry oil, really rich in antioxidants for that one. Also just like kind of helps protect your skin. Starflower oil, which I've never seen before, so I had to look this one up. It says, it is known for its moisturizing properties and it helps to nourish and hydrate your skin. So if you've ever heard of Starflower, I haven't, but this was a first for me. Then Padina Pavonica. This is a marine extract. It's also really hydrating and it helps firm your skin as well. Rose and Mimosa waxes. So this is part of that texture and it has additionally moisturizing benefits. So even though this is a balm to remove your makeup that's kind of the purpose it's also doing a lot of moisturization both of them say they're doing a lot of moisturization and then the last one says oat kernel oil soothes and nourishes the skin so th that's what that was listed on their site as key ingredients however there's a lot more ingredients in this so i'm going to look at the ingredients list here uh sweet almond oil that's going to moisturize and soothe your skin also really rich in vitamin a and vitamin e Capric caprylic triglyceride, I already said this, glycerin and coconut oil make a little baby, a super hydrating baby for your face. There are some more um, capric glycerides. This is actually more of an emulsifier though. And cedral alcohol, it's a fatty alcohol, another emulsifier, also softens your skin though. So we see next the elderberry oil, more, um, this is almond glycerides, and oat kernel oil. A lot of these are just nourishing your skin. Wheat germ oil, so if you have a gluten allergy, this one does have wheat germ. I'm not sure if that affects your gluten allergy or for celiacs or anything like that, so make sure you check on that before you purchase this product or pick this product. Shea butter, one of my favorite moisturizers. This one has orange peel wax, glycerin, moisturizing, uh, anything else I see in here? Burago seed oil, that's really cool. Moisturize, soothe skin as well. Coconut oil, moisturizes and conditions. It's kind of, I'm repeating myself. It's a lot of oils, a lot of waxes. This has tocopherol, which is vitamin E, really high in antioxidants. Also very good at, um, <sighs> words are hard, protecting from the free radical damage of the environment. Then you have hydrolyzed collagen here that's gonna improve your skin elasticity and um, help reduce fine lines and wrinkles, which you didn't see that in the other product. If I moved around, it's because I had to answer my front door. But we're on to the third item only. Less of these have, I think only one more has ingredients, so it won't take us long. The next one is from Fourth and Reckless. It is the Una Faux Suede Crescent bag. So it's a uh, one of those like moon shaped. That's what crescent means, right? Bag. It's a sixty dollar retail value, and it has adjustable straps, so it could be like over your shoulder. It looks like it could be a crossbody, but not comfortably, based on the photos. But it does extend, and it is because of the faux suede. It is cruelty free and vegan friendly as well. The sizing of this is 11.42 inches by 3.95 inches. I usually have my little tape measure, but for the sake of time and getting this video up for you, I'm gonna not bring it out right now. And then 19 by seven inches. So the shortest length is 16.5 inches and then the longest is 21 for that strap. It is adjustable, like I said. It has a pocket on the inside, just one pocket though, and says sponge clean only for cleaning it. There were no reviews, but when I did look it up online, I did find that this brand had it on their website, 
but it said $80, not $60. FabFitFun listed it as a $60 value. I don't know what the actual value is or if there's something different about the one on the site versus like if maybe it's a FabFitFun exclusive, they've changed something that makes it a $60 value instead of an $80 value. The next product is from Kopari Beauty. Kopari Beauty is a coconut based skincare company. And this is their Moisture Whipped Ceramide Cream. Ceramides are the lipid layer of your skin. So like kind of that top layer of skin, the like spongy layer that makes our skin skin. And this is a $42 value. It's vegan, cruelty-free, sulfate-free, paraben-free as well. Sizing is 2.1 ounces. The spoiler video FabFitFun posted says it's unscented. However, some of the reviews mention scent. So maybe it's unscented as in like it's fragrance free, but there might be some scent from some of the ingredients. For example, if you use essential oils, like if you have a random essential oil in a skincare product, it's gonna have the scent of that essential oil even if you didn't include fragrance. Kapari also uses 100% organic coconut oil in its products and that's from the Philippines. I'm gonna read the key ingredients, which is number one, and the ingredients named after ceramides to help restore and maintain that lipid balance, that natural skin barrier, and also prevents moisture loss as well. Coconut oil, which is also antibacterial, it's really hydrating, softening as well. Hyaluronic acid, that's a humectant. It actually absorbs up to a thousand times its own weight in moisture, so it basically attracts and retrains moisture. Squalane, this mimics your skin's natural oil, so it gives you a lightweight hydration and it also balances oil production. So if you're too oily or not oily enough, having this like mimic of actual, the actual oil your skin produces helps your body regulate to produce it more properly, if that makes sense. And then it has plant-based peptides which support collagen production. So peptides are the little building blocks for that collagen production, helping to firm and smooth your skin. This had 4.6 stars. It had 283 reviews. The positives were deep hydration, a lightweight feel. Also people really liked that it had ceramides. They really did see that difference. They said they saw that it was working. Um, sensitive skin friendly and that it has a light scent. Like I said, they said in the video, completely unscented. That's not what it said in the reviews. The negatives were they didn't like the jar packaging. It's pretty hard for something, especially something that doesn't last very long to keep in a jar packaging because it's less hygienic, number one, but also air and other things get in that jar. So um, some people did say like, a better a pump would be more hygienic or a better packaging so that was kind of the main complaint i saw and then if you had really dry skin or if some of the reviewers had really dry skin they still thought it was hydrating but said it's not hydrating enough for how dry my skin is and it takes um they also said it takes too long to absorb i already went through the key ingredients but there's more ingredients on the list so i'm going to walk through them just looking at them water it's water based formula hydrates the skin as well glycerin humectant moisturizing, capric caprylic triglyceride, already talked about that, coconut oil, and glycerin make a little baby, also really hydrating. There's a couple fatty alcohols here, so octylododecanol is a fatty alcohol that is gonna improve your skin texture. Dicaprylic ether, or ether, I'm not sure exactly how you say that, is also lightweight, non-greasy feel moisturizer. Then you have 2,3-butanediol, and I am for sure butchering all of these, by the way. So please don't repeat my pronunciations, but I know what they do. This is a humectant, and it helps retain moisture in your skin. Then glycerol stearate citrate. <laughs> this is an emulsifier. It helps blend the oil and water components of this product. Ceterol alcohol, this is another fatty alcohol. Again, really helps soften and smooth your skin. Then you have one comma two hexonediol. As you can see, it's like kind of the same as the last word that I also couldn't pronounce. That's also a humectant. Squalane, so this is gonna mimic your skin's natural oils. It provides lightweight production. It helps improve your skin elasticity as well. Shea butter, super nourishing, deeply moisturizing. Let's see if I can find something else. I have another fatty alcohol in here as an emulsifier. Um, hydrogenated lecithin, another emulsifier. This also really helps hydrate your skin. Then 
You have some thickening agents. You have a couple acids here, behenic acid and stearic ster acid. Those are fatty acids. They're going to condition your skin. Um, another fatty alcohol, sterile, al ste sterile alcohol. I don't know. I really don't know how to pronounce things, but fatty alcohol acts as an emulsifier as well. Then you have the coconut fruit extract that's going to moisturize. You have jojoba seed oil, again, moisturizing. Ceramide NP, that's a type of ceramide that restores that skin barrier that I was talking about. Let's see if there's anything else. Phospholipids, that's gonna help hydrate and also helps repair that skin barrier. That word lipid is that layer. Um, ethyl, ethyl hexylglycerin, conditioning agent. Also, that's a preservative. Um, what else? Baobab seed oil, super rich in vitamins and antioxidants for that. Watermelon seed oil, moisturizing as well. And again, watermelon, a lot of the fruit um, oils have a lot of antioxidants, a lot of vitamins and antioxidants. Let's see, a couple preservatives then. Um, tocopherol, which is vitamin E. Aloe leaf juice, and that soothes and hydrates your skin. Also, like when you get sunburn, it helps kind of repair that. So it does have a little bit of like anti-inflammatory properties as well. Baobab fruit extract, again, super rich in vitamins and antioxidants. And sodium hyaluronate. So that is the form of hyaluronic acid that can penetrate your skin and it helps pull that moisture in. So it's more of like the anti-aging version and it's plumping your skin from the inside. So it's like going in and then plumping your skin. So it helps reduce some of those fine lines as well. The videos that have skincare always take me a lot longer. The rest of the products I believe are no longer skincare. We have the KitchenAid. It's like a double cookie pan with a little cookie scoop. It's nine by 13 baking sheet and then the lifter. And that is $45 retail value. The size of the cookie sheet is nine by 13, which is like pretty normal. They stack instead of like one smaller and larger, they're the exact same size and they stack within each other. It does say that this is dishwasher safe. Also says, let's see, heat resistant, nonstick. The alternatives are to have an aluminum pan, which does provide really quick heating and that even heating that you like, but they aren't as durable. And then stainless steel, which takes a lot longer to heat up and maybe doesn't provide the best like heating, but it's really durable. So when you have this aluminized steel, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. So it has the really even heat distribution. It has really good durability because of the steel core. It has, it's corrosion resistant. It also has like nonstick properties, really resistant to like getting deformed while you're cooking those. If you know, like you buy like really cheap <laughs> pans, you can see sometimes they like deform a little bit. When you have something like this, where it's like really well made materials wise, then it helps the longevity and you don't see that like, if you've, if you've done it, you know what I mean, but like it like never sits flat again after you've made a few things in it. I really wish I would have brought my measuring thing because here's another thing I can measure. It's also from KitchenAid. KitchenAid has never been in Fat Fit Fun before. This is their loaf pan for $29.99. It's in the color pistachio, which is just like a light minty green color. It is nine by five by 2.25, which is standard for if you're baking a loaf, which that's what you would do with a loaf pan, like banana bread or just like, you know what I mean? Like lemon loaf, zucchini bread, something like that. This one is dishwasher safe. It also says you can put it in the freezer and oven. Obviously you need to put it in the oven in order to make that loaf. And it's stoneware. I didn't see any of the reviews or anything else more specific about this product. So other than it's like a really pretty pistachio green color. The next brand is G-I-R, which stands for Get It Right. And it is a set of three utensils. One that they call a spoon chilla, which is half spoon, half spatula. And so three utensils and then the ceramic holder for $78.85. I don't know what magic this spoonchula spoon and whisk can do, but $78 for just three seems like a lot. However, I will talk a little bit about that as well. Um, care instructions, they're dishwasher safe. It's heat resistant up to 425 degrees. They're also antimicrobial because they're made of the silicone, the spoon and spoonchula or silicone. The whisk is a metal whisk with the silicone handle and then the holder is ceramic. It says also that the handles are ergonomic online and then 
get it gir stands for get it right and so their mission is to create high quality kitchen tools and get it right in getting you the best tools so i think that their pricing maybe has a little bit to do with that mission do i think any spatula is really worth that much i don't know you guys let me know is there a difference between just like a standard spatula and like a spoonchula or something that's just like that great i don't know i feel like all my spatulas last a really long time and they're also made of silicone and they just like i feel like they do really well i don't really feel like i have cheap spatulas so and I pay way less than $78.85. I could get like a 10 pack for that. I think the cookie pan and the loaf pan were pretty fall because I do think we bake in the fall. But the next product I think in this category at least is the most fall item. It is from Sunday Citizen and I've heard really great things about Sunday Citizen. This is their microfiber snug throw but Fabifun listed as snug throw. That's usually the oversized one. This one's called their snug lap throw and you can get it in buttercream or marsala orange which i think are both great colors for 65 dollars retail value it's one or the other it's 48 by 60 so that's why it's the lap throw because sunday citizen typically has oversized throws they're like really known for their oversized throws so this is their smaller version it does say it's machine washable gentle cycle and then also tumble dry low so you can wash and dry this 100% microfiber. This brand's actually really known for microfiber and then also for using bamboo. And I did find reviews, but I didn't find it for this lap throw. I only found it for the oversized throw and that did have 4.8 stars with 247 reviewers. I'm not gonna go over those because some of those were about how large it was and how oversized it was. So it's a smaller version of that. So that might not be super representative, but there was a lot of reviews about softness. So I decided to include it. The last two items before the throwback are from Sin, S-I-N. They're also glass products. They're very delicate looking glass products, but they are gorgeous and really modern design. The first is the Urch Decorative Glass Bowl Set of Three. They are food safe, so it's not just for like your keys or anything like that. You can use them for potpourri as well or decoratively, but they are food safe if you want to use them for ice cream or if you want to use them for candy. And this is an $80 value for those three bowls. There's three sizes. So the small is 3.5 inches diameter-ish, because it's not a fully a circle, but 3.5 by 3.5 and then 1.7 high. The medium is 4.5 by 4.3 and then two inches high. And then the large is 5.5 this way by 5.3 and it's 2.4 inches high. Like I said, you can use them for anything. You can use them for jewelry, you can use them for keys. They're really beautiful, really modern. You're seeing them on screen somewhere right now. The next one from the same brand, Sin, is a Fauna Glass Oil Cruet. And so this is an $80 value, which I also think is kind of expensive for that, but it's really, it's more of like a high-end brand. So the sizing of this is 5.8 inches high, 4.3 inches wide, but it has like a really weird shape. And at first, when I saw that shape was, how in the world do you clean it? Because you'd have to be able to get especially if you want to change out from oil to balsamic or something else. And the fill is 11 ounces, by the way. But the great thing is this is dishwasher safe. The glass is actually dishwasher safe. This is how you clean it. You let the dishwasher clean it. So I really love that because I feel like a lot of times those glass like oil bottles are typically not. Usually they're hand wash only and that's why you need a little bit of bigger top so you could stick the little bottle brush inside of there. Don't have to do that here. The stopper is made of cork. And so that one is, that part is hand washed, but the rest is dishwasher safe, which I love. This didn't have any reviews for this one. There is one throwback and I'm not gonna talk too much about the throwback. It is Gaiam. It's a foldable yoga mat in Midsummer Night. 68 inches by 22 inches by 0 0.07 inches. Um, I will say it had low reviews, 3.9 stars with 56 reviewers and I guess positives were portability, lightweight, uh, easy to clean, easy to wipe down. And then negatives were it was too thin for comfort. It also had an odor when you first opened it. And if you sweat on it, like hot yoga, or like if you're just a sweaty person when you do yoga, it makes it, the grip isn't very good. So it's like really hard to use at that point if it's even just like a little bit moist. So there are pros and cons. I had this. I actually had this exact item and ended up giving it away. The person I gave it to put it on top of a towel. He like did yoga in his hotel room. And so he would put it on top of a towel so that it would be also a little bit more grippy, 
which I thought was really smart. And they were just using the, the towel from the hotel. So I think in that way, it might work really well. But for my purposes, when I was mostly doing yoga at home and I already had really nice cushiony yoga mats and I like my yoga mats to have cushion or if I was doing yoga outdoors and I like wanted that cushion so I'm not feeling like little rocks under me it didn't work very well for me that's just my personal experience I'm not going to talk too much more about it because most people already have this and if you don't already have it there's plenty of videos about them already or people showing theirs or something like that so I'm just giving you kind of the gist on that one and that's it that is your category one I tried to make this video as quick as possible <laughs> We'll see how much uh, editing this takes and then when it'll get posted. I think I'll probably only get three done this time, but we'll see. If we can get all six, we'll get all six. Please let me know down in the description box below which item you're choosing, or if I changed your mind about an item, I love to know that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.